<laughs> On any given day, about 40% of employees report being tired. This is estimated to cost the US economy $136 billion a year. Apart from employees, though, people just in general these days often report being tired, right? Does this happen to you? Yeah, a lot of people just wake up and they're still tired from the day before. They wake up on Monday morning, and even though they just had a weekend, they're still fatigued. A lot of people report needing vacations from their vacations, right? Well, why does this happen? And what can we do about it? Well, let me see if I can't shed some light on this for you a little bit and give you one potential solution. This is a rechargeable battery. It's the kind of battery you find in cell phones, tablets, various other electronic devices. Now, when these batteries are fully charged, those devices operate well. But when the batteries get depleted, they don't operate so well, or not at all. Well, people are like batteries. People operate well and feel well when their human batteries are fully charged. Now, you would think that we could just recharge our batteries in our downtime, when we have a little R&R, &R, right? A little rest and relaxation. But that's not happening. And it's not happening because downtime, R&R, &R, is not enough to get those batteries recharged. What you need to do if you want to recharge those batteries is transform your downtime into what I call uptime. Uptime satisfies the factors that lead to replenishment and produce recovery, or what I call boosting. So how do we do that? How do we transform our downtime into uptime? Well, what I've done is I've surveyed the research literature on recovery, and I've synthesized all that information into a very simple, easy to understand model that I call the RENEW model. Now, RENEW is an acronym that stands for rebuild, nourish, and unhook. Okay, rebuild, nourish, and unhook. RENEW. And you can see it represented in this model with three buckets. If you can fill those three buckets in your leisure time, then you effectively transform your downtime into uptime, and you get a boost. You recharge those batteries, right? What is boosting? Well, boosting is about promoting psychological well-being, physical health, including not being tired, and enhancement. Enhancement in, is, means you get better at what you're doing. Okay? And it doesn't matter what you're doing. In, in improving your um, ability and enhancing your performance can be during paid employment, but it can also be taking care of young children or elderly parents or getting through school. Whatever your obligations are during your weekly obligations, if you transform your downtime into uptime and fill those three buckets, you get better at your obligations. So let me discuss each of those three buckets and give you a sense of how to fill them so that you can transform your downtime into uptime. So the first bucket is the rebuild bucket. Rebuilding is all about rebuilding, replenishing, the resources that we use up during our weekly obligations, okay? Resources can be physical resources, like physical energy. So if you're emptying boxes out of an 18-wheeler all week, like I did when I was going through school, you deplete your physical energy. You need to rebuild that. But it can also be um, psychological resources, like concentration and attention, self-control. Okay, any kind of resource gets depleted during the week. So imagine, for example, a lawyer who argues court cases all week. And then on the weekend, coaches his daughter's softball team and argues with parents about who the starting pitcher should be. Right? That lawyer is not rebuilding his resources because he's using, in his leisure time, the same resources that he uses in his obligation time. So to transform your downtime into uptime, you need to make sure you're engaging in activities in your leisure time that don't draw on the same resources as are required in your obligation time. Research shows that people who uh, uh, have very few non-work-related hassles on the weekend, which allow their resources to rebuild, come back to work on Monday morning feeling less burned out. And their job performance is also higher. They get a boost. So what you want to do is, as I said, make sure that in your leisure time, you're allowing those resources to rebuild. What's a good idea is to, in your leisure time, engage in activities that draw on resources that are the opposite of the ones you need in your obligation time. So if, you're, if your work, your activity, your, your weekly obligations require concentration and focus and precision, then in your leisure time, like on the weekend, just let your mind run free. So for example, surgeons on the weekend can paint. I don't recommend the opposite. 
That's the first bucket. The second bucket is the nourish bucket. Now, nourishing is all about nourishing our human needs. Okay, we have at least two kinds of needs. We've got physical needs, like for sleep and water, sex, apparently. Um, you know, if you don't eat and you don't drink, you don't live for very long, right? That's a need. This is the difference between rebuilding resources and nourishing needs. Rebuilding resources is nice to do, but nourishing needs is necessary if we're to live and if we're to thrive. Now, in addition to uh, physical, physical or physiological needs, we also have psychological needs. Now, the needs that we uh, consider most often in psychology and management are the need for autonomy, which is the need to feel as though your actions are freely chosen, the need for competence, which is the need to feel skilled at things, and the need for relatedness, which is the need to have high-quality relationships. Research shows us that people who satisfy their need for competence on the weekend by, for example, learning a new chord on the guitar, come back to work on Monday morning feeling more recovered. People who satisfy their need for relatedness on the weekend by, for example, calling up an old friend they haven't seen in a while and inviting them over for dinner, come back to work on Monday feeling less burned out. Now, of course, uptime can exist in any moment of leisure that you have. It can be the weekend or vacation, evenings at home, coffee breaks. Research shows us that people who spend their coffee breaks satisfying their need for autonomy by engaging in activities that they have freely chosen and enjoy end those coffee breaks with higher levels of resources. They're filling two buckets at the same time. They have higher concentration, higher attention, and they report fewer physical ailments, less headaches, less back pain. They're boosting. Now, switching from psychological resources to physical resources, how many of you will admit to sleeping on the job? <laughs> Very few people. Why don't more people do that? Right? Why don't people sleep on the job? Right? We know that people are always tired. Right? Always, so many of us are not operating at our best. Why don't we sleep at work? Why not? Sleep is good for us. Research shows that naps as short as 10 or 15 minutes can restore subjective alertness, objective alertness, and increase your job performance. So if you're tired at work, isn't it a good idea to take a little nap? I encourage you to do that. If your bosses don't like the idea of you sleeping on the job, just send them to me. I'll have a little chat with them. Because that's the second bucket, the nourish bucket. The third bucket is the unhook bucket. Now, unhooking has two components. The first component you're already familiar with because you've been doing it your whole life. The first component of unhook is relaxation. And relaxation is absolutely valuable. That's why it's in the Renew model. It is the, it's, the, it's what downtime is really all about, right? Rest and relaxation. And it is good for us. Research shows us that people who end their weekends reporting a sufficient amount of relaxation uh, do say that they're more recovered than people that don't have enough relaxation. So it's good for us. But it's not enough. If you want to get as big a boost as possible, you want to do more. The second half of the unhook bucket is something you probably haven't thought of before. And it's called psychological detachment. Psychological detachment is about mentally turning off from work. It's not enough to physically leave the office or whatever obligations you have. You have to mentally leave the office. So if you go on vacation and you're checking your email twice a day to see what's going on at work, you're not psychologically detaching. If you're coming home from work in the evenings and you're constantly checking your phone, see if your boss texted you, you're not psychologically detaching and you're not gonna get as big a boost. You have to mentally disengage from your obligations. Something that a lot of people have a lot of trouble doing. Google did a survey, and they found that only 31% of their employees were able to effectively psychologically detach. Now, we have a big problem today, a huge problem that's growing. Organizations have always been concerned about absenteeism, right, when people don't show up at work. In more recent times, organizations have been concerned about what's called presenteeism, which is when people do show up at work when they don't need to. For example, when they're sick. Now, sometimes people show up at work when they don't need to because they have flex time or they're teleworkers, but they want to be physically at the office because they're afraid that if they're not physically there, bad things will happen to them in their career, like they'll get passed over for promotion. We have a new ism today. We have absenteeism, we have um, presenteeism, but we also have what's now called, what I call, 
availableism. Availableism is the idea that you must constantly be available or bad things are going to happen to you in your career. So if you get an email at 11 o'clock at night, you've got to check it. You get a text from your boss at 5 o'clock in the morning, you've got to respond. This is availableism, and it's a problem. Because if you suffer from availableism, you never psychologically detach, and you're not going to get as big a boost as you could. So my recommendation to you is, in your leisure time, you know, engage in activities in which you get completely absorbed. Practice transition rituals. So for example, Friday afternoon when you come home from work, pour yourself a cup of tea or a glass of wine, and that ritual demarcates the fact that you're in a different phase of the week now. You don't have to think about work. And for Pete's sake, put away the phone. Or have two phones. Have one phone for work and one phone for your, so phone for your social life. And when you finish work, go charge the work phone and then don't look at it until you're working again. Allow yourself to psychologically detach. Now that's it. That's all you need to do to transform your downtime into uptime. You fill those three buckets and it happens. Now notice, there's no work involved in filling those buckets. It's like going to a buffet at a restaurant. You just you, you put food on your plate. You don't have to work. You don't have to make the food. It's very easy. You just put the food on your plate. And if you want to eat healthily, you just make smart choices about the food you select. Well, if you want to turn your downtime into uptime, there's no work involved. You just have to make smart choices about the activities in which you engage and don't engage. There are very few personal and professional advantages to downtime, but there are numerous personal and professional advantages to uptime. So do yourself a favor. Transform your downtime into uptime. And then instead of just having your leisure time give you a break, it'll give you a boost. Thank you.